Hello everyone, Dr. Zia Tahir here. So welcome to my lecture series of vibration analysis. And this video tutorial is signal analysis measured by accelerometer of mobile phone using MATLAB mobile Android application. So the description of uh, this problem which I'm going to solve, the accelerometer of mobile phone was used to measure signal of five cycles of hand motion along one foot ruler. So the mobile phone application called MATLAB mobile of Android phone was used to record signal with the sampling rate of 100 hertz. So one feet ruler is hold vertically and mobile phone uh, while placed on the palm. So it gave five cycles in vertical direction. So this mobile phone, MATLAB mobile phone app. So here is its description, sensor data collection with mobile phone, uh, MATLAB mobile. And it can, so mobile, MATLAB mobile phone sensor screen. So using built-in, accelerometer in mobile so it can record acceleration in x y and z direction in meter per second squared it can do other functions as well so here is so here is you can toggle on acceleration sensor and then you can set it its sampling rate by default is 10 hertz but you can set it 100 hertz and at this video uses the recording of 100 hertz and then here is a sensor sampling so you can change the sampling rate and then here is the mobile phone uh, like its z axis is perpendicular to the screen y axis is along the length and x axis along the length uh, width note that z axis is a positive when the device is laying face flat on the surface so this is design and consistent with MATLAB convention. So when the device is flat in surface, the acceleration is plus 9.81. So it's reference or when the mobile phone is flat, so its zero value is 9.81. So it will go up and low, which correspond to the acceleration of device zero meter per second minus the acceleration of gravity. So like as so 9.81 is taken as a reference, while the reading so in this video i am going to plot acceleration in time domain and then uh, integrate that signal to get velocity and displacement and these are the MATLAB functions which i am going to use I need to first get this time in seconds and then to deprend the data. So to get time, I need to know what's the sampling rate. So I have recorded the data for the sampling rate of 100 hertz. So now I am going to get time in so here you can see that it is data measured in milliseconds so that data is being measured in milliseconds so for that one what i am going to do i will find out height of the data so because i am as uh, using so this is a table so otherwise if it is an array so you can use length but in case of table or times table you need to use height so height data that will give me the height data will give me that how much is the height of that data so what i did i actually uh, created a 
row and then i transpose it to get column and then i multiply it i uh, divide it with the sampling rate so sampling rate is 100 so by multiplying it uh, 1 into 10 to raise power 2 so it is the same as dividing by 100 so then i'll get that data as a column here so here is a new column is being added 0 0.01 0 0.02 so, so that is corresponding to the sampling rate so a new column is being added So the next one I need to detrend data and for that one uh, detrend command is being used. So to learn more about detrend like what this detrend and how it's work. So you can watch my previous video like vibration analysis lecture 5 so numerical differentiation and integration or otherwise you can search in MATLAB help about detrend the data. The question is why dtrend is required so need to look back in this for this one so when we are going to dtrend data so we are trying to so we are trying to set mean value as zero because its mean value is 9.81 and it seems that there is some offset with for x and y axis as well so i am using dtrend data dot x because like in this data it is a times table so data dot x data dot y and data dot z so these are the uh, raw signal sensor data okay and i am going to save it as xd xd trend yd trend and z trend so i can execute that function now and then i can see here so in the data so you can see a new columns are added there so xd yd and zd are the new columns so they are being added so now i can plot that uh, xd yd and zd now against time so plot data x and then xd and its display name is data dot xd and then hold on and then data t into yd so and like as here is the xd data here is the time data and then x level is time and y level is acceleration and now it is d trend data so that is the d trend data and you can see that now this data x y z it, it is like it is centered along that zero. Let me go to the plot browser and then you can see here. Okay, so this is centered along zero. Okay, so all of these are centered along zero. So in the next step, I can smooth that data because here you can see along z axis. So there are some along z axis, there are some extraordinary high peaks and for that one i'll use that function smooth data and smooth data what it do smooth data method and window so specify the length of window used by the smoothing method to smooth data and i am using here moving average for smoothing data so here is a smooth data smooth noisy data and i am using this one so smooth length of the window using the smoothing method for example smooth a moving median 5 so it smooths the data a by taking the median of 5 element sliding window and here are methods so i am using moving mean method and the window length i am using 3 so it's mean that it will take for any particular point and then one forward and one backward point so now smooth data using moving average method in window length of s so s must be an odd number because it takes like one point and current point and one forward and one backward for window length of three two forward two backward for window length of five 
so like here data smooth data so now that one after smooth i am naming it as ax ay and az acceleration in x or y direction and smooth data command moving average that is a method and s is the window length with three and here you can see that in in data so now there is a column here you can see data ax then data ay and then data az that is being added in the data so now i'm going to plot that data which is smoothened with the uh, window length of three so now figure three is the plot data t time versus ax so i'm going to execute it and then i'll see that what is going on so here you can see that like most of the data like it is from minus three to six and by smoothing it is become minus two to five and let's say if i'll use a window size of five so then i'll see what will happen yeah so now this data become minus two to three okay so i am using here smooth data with window length of 5 so that is now acceleration in x y and z direction plotted and with the smoothing and smoothing like window length 3 or 5 a lower value 3 or 5 need to use here so the next step is to integrate acceleration to get velocity and for that one i am going to use that Come traps. So this is cumulative trapezoidal rule, and it is a numerical integration method. So what it does? Come traps t x integrate x with respect to the coordinate or scalar specified spacing specified by t. So now numerical integration for velocity. So I have used that cumulative trapezoidal. So data t. So this is what uh, which respect do I want to do and then this is acceleration and similarly so after that numerical integration of ax with respect to t I'll get velocity vx vy and vz so when I'm going to execute these three so then I'll have that velocity along x axis velocity along y velocity along z and then I can plot them. I am going to plot only velocity along z direction because here in the problem I get that like my measurement was mainly in vertical direction, so that's why I am just getting velocity in velocity in z direction. So then I can run that one, sir. So, now here i get that velocity so this velocity uh, because from the acceleration yes i can see from the acceleration like in the smooth data so by plot browser so i can see that roughly one two three four five like five cycles here and here these cycles are much clearer and here the cycles are like one two three four and five cycles so in y direction they are much clear and in the x direction they are not very much clear but when i have plotted that velocity in z direction so you can see that it, those five cycles are very much clear like first second third fourth and fifth so this is detrended data this one is from the d20 data so five cycle so this is how we can integrate signal acceleration signal to get velocity so the next one is need to integrate velocity to get displacement okay because here as a, like the oscillations are like peak to peak distance is around 30 centimeter so to get displacement i need to integrate velocity using cumulative trapezoidal 
or come traps rule so here is an american integration for displacement and come traps data dot t data dot vx and it is saved as dx okay and then after that integration i need to plot like displacement along z direction so that is figure 5 data plot data t and data v and the line color is green so data z is being plotted against t so now i am going to execute that and then let's see that what i'll get so that is the displacement versus time i got and you can see clearly here one two three four and five cycles okay and for those five cycles so they are like from zero to around 30. okay so you can detrend that one so uh, this data can be detrended so that its mean is zero so for that one this detrend function can be used okay so this is how you can see that the displacement in vertical direction uh, peak to peak if i say so that is around approximate 30 and here you can see that five cycles are clearly visible here and then because this is uh, like vibration or these oscillation were set by hand and humans are not machines so that's why uh, there is not much accuracy in taking readings but like the results are very much obvious you can see here five cycles with the displacement of 30 centimeter and here i can see all that like in in line all that graphs okay and here you have this is the data which i have plotted all the way like this is the deep rendered data then that is acceleration in x y and z direction then this is the velocity in x y and z direction and that is displacement in x y and z direction so thank you very much for watching so i hope that this you find this video helpful for your vibration analysis so thank you very much for watching